What's going on guys, Randall here from Off The Brink TV, bringing you another tutorial episode for 2K16 and one that I've been looking to do for a long time, defense. Now, this is essentially for my career, but it can be used in other modes. However, I'm, I might make one for my team in, in regular modes because there's some switching off options I would like to teach. But let's get into it. So right there off the tip, you can already see some good defense that actually turns around into a dime on the other end. And I'm going to go into this more specific uh, with these. I'm not just going to play them fast like that, but... Right off the tip, you know, I, I had good spacing. I put myself ready to help, but also stayed slightly in the passing lane. Um, but noticed how I ran it, 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 immediately. I ran back. Um, I was already back, so ready to get on offense as well. So if you have no, no place to get a rebound, there's no chance for you to get a rebound. Get out and run. And don't be afraid to give up the ball. I mean, look, so I'm already out and running immediately and then I throw the ball you don't always have to be the one man fast break you know I see three guys here I pass the ball up quickly to get the dime get it to the open man but a lot of the times I like to pass off the break you know break start and then get into position look at where I get right here I get right to the wing I position myself nice for an open shot just in case Tyreek gets deed up so don't be afraid to pass the ball up immediately but and don't be afraid to get all the way back on offense immediately or even on defense and i'm going to get into more of that with you in just a sec now when i'm d'ing up my man i like to hold both modifiers that's the left trigger and the right trigger to stay in front but the second i get beat or i need to catch up to my defender i let go of the left modifier and hold turbo and run towards my defender but then when i get into a position where i feel like i could d him up well enough i'll grab hold of that left trigger again to go into that shuffle that shuffle step you know to to get into the defensive animation but notice here how i was right up on moutier but then i backed off a little bit because he, he, if you overplay someone on defense, they can easily cut to the rack and get a pass, which you see me do a lot, and cut back door. So you don't want to overplay. You don't want to stay right up on them on the three-point line. You want to stay a little back and try to be in a position where you can guess their movement, but you have some room for error. But notice right here. So I come over here and I bother a little bit just in case I could swipe the ball on a double team or just to bother him, but I get right back on my ant man. Never lose track of your man. But another thing, notice how I have one foot in the paint ready to help. Always one foot in the paint ready to help on that side, but not too far where I can't get back on my man. But then as soon as I see the shot go off, I get into position for a rebound because on that defensive set, I was in position for a rebound. So I was able to get in there and help out. Unfortunately, Tyreek Evans made the mistake of rotating when I did not lose track of my man, so he actually messed up. You do want to rotate on the picks, but you want to be selective. You don't want to rotate and force a mismatch, but unfortunately, your teammates, if they run into a screen even slightly or even bump into you, they will rotate because I guess they feel like they're losing track of their guy. But in that case, Tyreek could have easily just continued to got on his man to contest that three-pointer. But be careful, you know, know when to rotate. Also look at your teammates, see what they're doing. Right there, I could have actually done that a little better and got on my man. Right there, I just work around the screen and contest. What I recommend you do, the way I contested that, what I recommend you do is go into your settings, go into your controller settings and set automatic shot contest to always not intense d just set it to always because if you're just remotely close to a guy shooting he will contest the shot i've been dominating hall of fame simulation and why well, i already dominated default that's too easy so i had to switch the simulation and i attribute a lot of my success to good defense now one-on-one -on -one defense can be easier for you if you follow this very trick spacing look at how i'm spaced here i hardly even have to move because i kept about two feet of distance from him it didn't matter that he spinned i was still able to just stay still and block him from driving look at the space it gives you room for error this is similar to last year i'm holding both modifiers staying in front following him able to guess 
But also, after I see the spin move, I have time to react because I'm not overplaying him. Yeah, it results in a basket, but he was forced to pass. A lot of times, it'll, co it'll cause a steal. It'll cause, you know, a miss if he tries to shoot, whatever. So you definitely want to space out so it gives you room for error. Here's an example of giving yourself room for error, but then still getting beat and how to recover. I maintain holding both triggers. I try to steal, stay in front. He does a spin move, but I broke the wrong way. But what I did was I let go of the left trigger to run and catch myself. But notice how I didn't run right up on him. I moved to where I thought he would go. I moved to the paint so because I knew he would drive. Just to get back in front of him and contest a shot. He hits the shot, but a lot of times he'll miss. Simulation is a mode where you are rewarded for good defense. I recover, get back in front of him, intense D, and successfully contest the shot. He hits it. But still, it was a good recovery. Nothing I could do there. I got beat, but you're gonna get beat. You wanna know how to recover. Like I said, release the left trigger, go to where you think. Try to guess the way you think he's gonna go. Boom, I thought he was gonna drive center, so I went right center, where if he goes left or he goes a little right, I could still use that automatic shot contest to get my hand up and still get it, as long as I'm in that middle and a few in giving that space so you still have that room for error and the ability to guess where he's going to drive or shoot. Here's another great example of releasing that modifier to catch up. Listen, you force the CPU into constantly taking bad shots, they're eventually gonna miss. They're gonna hit some, but they're gonna miss. So all you could do is do your best on the defensive end. Notice how we're creeping back and we wind up taking the lead and beating them, but notice how I, I go, know when to go under or over the screen. I go under the screen because I know he's going to drive, but I run to where I think he's going to go. He bounces off me and continues to try to drive, but notice how I didn't once again go right up on him. I slid towards the basket because that's where he's headed. He's not going to go take a fadeaway. He's going to try to drive right to my right around me. So I go, I guess, I guess he's going to drive there. Use both my modifiers to get in front of him, stop him a little bit. He bounces left, and then I cross towards the basket because there's only one way he could go to make a shot or make a drive, towards the hoop. I don't go at him. I don't go behind him. I go towards the basket. I aim myself towards the hoop to cut him off, and that actually results in a good shot defense and a block. Sorry, guys, but I think this needs to be a long one So, <laughs> because there's a lot of things I want to discuss. Again, notice I go over the screen just, to, just so I could stay on him because I knew I had the ability to go over the screen. He winds up getting foul and getting an N1 because the game wouldn't let me rebound. But notice, like I said before, I release the left modifier to catch up to him. But where do I go? I go towards the right block. I don't chase him. I go to where I think he's going to go. Now, if he stops by the corner and tries to take a shot, I'm still in position to contest him. But I'm also in position to cut him off. Think of it this way when you're playing defense. You want to guard the basket. You don't want to guard your defender. You want to guard the basket. You're protecting the basket. That's your basket. You don't want them putting their ball in your basket. So you're going to try to defend the basket. Always stay in between the basket and your defender. Always. There is no reason why you should ever be on the right or left of your defender. Always be in between those two marks. And always, when someone beats you, run to that position run to the cutoff position don't chase your defender that's the biggest mistake you're going to make because they're going to beat you they're going to slide around a layup and you're going to get frustrated run to where you think they're going to be but run in between them and the hoop i can't stress that enough and again notice the spacing i keep my two feet so when he does the behind the back move i don't even have to do much movement i don't even have to really slide left or right i could just stay there because the behind the back is not going to beat me because of the space i put myself in because of that two feet when he does the behind the back he's just going to run into me or give me a chance to maybe slide slightly right because i'm going to be able to predict the movements he's still got to go behind the back and then travel two extra steps so if I am have that spacing, it's easy for me to react. You, you want to give yourself room for error so you can react. Now here's another extremely, extremely important tip. If you're not in position to get a rebound, 
get back on defense, please. No idea why Bogut misses that, but notice how I'm all the way back. I get good transition defense every time up the floor. I get back. Get back. You're a guard. If you're a guard especially, get all the way back on defense. Stop the fast break. You don't want to let them get easy buckets. Notice how when you play Hall of Fame, they're always back. Why do you think they're getting back on D? They're not worried about offensive rebounds. Get back there. Now look, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Nobody, none of my teammates are here, and I'm the only one here playing the zone, and I'm able to force the miss. That's a, usually an easy two buckets for most people, but if you play defense correctly, you're not in position to rebound, you get back, play that zone, get in the paint, guard your basket, give yourself that spacing, you're going to at least reduce the amount of free baskets the CPU gets. And here I go, back on transition, throw the ball up, position myself at the wing, fill everything correctly, wide open tray, and now we lead by three. But that's really like a five point difference given how I stopped an easy two. Another thing, like I said, be patient. Don't quit, like don't get frustrated or whatever on defense and then start to double team guys or not follow you, man. Always stay on your man. Notice the spacing around the screen. Look how I'm in the paint ready to help. Look how I have one foot in the paint ready to help just in case. Bogut gets the board. Just in case he, you know, he gets around Bogut or something, I'm able, I got that one foot in the paint ready to contest. And notice, multiple defensive stocks, Tyreek Evans, wide open for three, and now we start to pull away. Again, now notice, this is right after the last great defensive stop. Look at my spacing here. Look at how two, three feet, he tries to... He tries to drive right through me. Easy steal because the spacing. If I was overplaying him, that was an easy cut to the basket for him. But because I spaced myself correctly, easy steal, easy bucket on the other end. And now we're on the cusp of a double digit lead. Again, just real quick, I come to set the screen. I'm wide open for the mid, but I miss. Look, no position for a rebound, but what do I, so what do I do? All the way back in the zone. He had no layup. They wind up making a bad pass, change of possession. Now, right here is a great example of knowing when to help in the paint. Remember how last year how I said if the ball was on the other side of where you are, you want to always have one foot in the paint ready to sneak in and just help out on either a rebound or if he gets around his man. Well, also, if you see you stay in the passing lanes and you see that the man you're defending is far and you can always get back to him if you need be, don't be afraid to get in and help out. I'm in the passing lanes here. My man is way too far out to hit that. Like, you know, that's a long three. So I'm going to be able to get back on him on defense before he gets in position for a three. So I'm cutting off the passing lane here. But as soon as I see the ball handler start to go up with a shot, I'm all the way in the paint. I know he's going to shoot. I know he's going to go for a layup. So let me get in here and help out. And luckily... I get the rebound because it doesn't, even though there's a lot of blue jerseys in there, it doesn't look like anybody was about to get the board. So luckily I was in there to help. Boom. Spacing, spacing. I see he goes up for the layup. Boom. Because I'm in good position, I break right into the paint. I break right in. I have that one foot in there all day. I go in, shuffle through my boys. AD, I don't know where he's going. I go and grab the board. And now we're off to the races up by 14 points. Here is another beautiful example of when to help. So balls on the other side, far away from my man. I'm able to get back to my guy if he passes to his right. But what I do is I take a step in to block off the lane, protect my basket, help out my people. And just by me having good position, he drops the ball. I can't tell you how many steals I get from just standing there. He just drops the ball, trying to run. Terrible offensive set better defensive set amazing defensive set all from just positioning boom i have one foot in the paint ready to help one foot in the paint ready to help still able to get back on my man i break right towards to protect because if he passes right like i said i'm able to contest that corner three no problem up by 18 now the very next defensive set look just positioning where is my man he's nowhere near me nowhere near me he's still trying to get on offense this guy thinks he's going to break around and hit a layup with nobody here? What is this? Look at where I am. I'm not all the way out in the corner waiting for my man. I'm over here to protect my basket. I'm in between my man and the basket with one foot in the paint ready to help. I see him almost get around Ryan Anderson, I think that is. 
I take my step in, and he just drops the ball for another change of possession on our way to be up by 20 points. Now, here's a little bit of an advanced defensive set. Don't be afraid to draw your charges, but don't overdo it. I try to get them there because I know they need points. They're getting aggressive. But because of my spacing, because of cutting him off and not chasing him, I just get between him and the basket. I see him start to drive. So I go to set a charge and it's successful. They need buckets. They are going to get aggressive with five minutes left in the fourth down by so much. So know the game, know how to position yourself. And as long as you are spaced out, you're going to be able to make decisions before, better because you're going to be able to know how they're going to react. Because of my spacing, I saw that he started to drive. He started to get that turbo going. He started to go towards sprint towards the hoop. So I set the charge. Again, I hate to keep saying it, but because of that spacing, I knew how to react. And another change of possession and excellent defensive set. Now, the reason I went under the screen was because when I set the original charge, I let go of the turbo to catch up to him and cut him off. Remember before how I said you want to get between him and the basket? Notice how I run between him and the basket. Now, he makes the mistake of not driving, and I capitalize. I Because I couldn't go over the screen, I had to go under the screen. I went under the screen to meet him. Still was able to contest if he shot the three, but also was in position to react to how he was going to drive towards the basket in case he decided to do so. He did and I drew the charge. Remember, you're holding both modifiers when you're Ding up your man and only letting go in the left modifier when you need to catch up to your man. Defense is an all the time thing, not a sometimes thing. The only reason I showed just the, the Nuggets game was because that's the one I did a lot of replays on for the sake of this video. But look at the score against the Thunder. It doesn't matter the team. I'm always playing lockdown defense, even against the fastest, quickest, and strongest guys in the league like Russell Westbrook. Look at my spacing here again. I should title the vi this video spacing because it's really all about, look at how far I am from him, ready to guess where he's going. As a result, I hardly even have to move when he does a spin than a half spin. Just constantly maintaining position, slowing him down. AD able to get there for a block, and I'm still there for a good shot contest. AD with a big second block, change of possession, and we are shattering the Thunder. This causes a shot clock violation, but again, look at where I am. He's not going to shoot from there. He's going to probably drive Russell Westbrook, so I give him the space. Still have the opportunity to contest the three just in case. All his spin move and fancy BS isn't enough. And there goes Deion Waiters trying to chuck a shot, all due to my defense and Anthony Davis putting the nail in the coffin. So that's about it, guys. I really hope you liked this tutorial. If you feel I missed something, put it in the comment box. Maybe I'll do a part two. Hopefully I covered everything. Remember, hit that thumbs up if you like this video and let me know if it helps you. Let me know. Let me, you know, show me some clips even um, if, if you're really starting to practice these techniques and becoming really successful whatever just you know get in the comment box and let's discuss it again i hope you like this video hit that subscribe button if it's your first time here and as always i'll catch you guys in the next one peace